G'day from a sunny Imola after the Imola Grand Prix and what a race that was. Lando Norris with a couple more laps could well have got Max Verstappen, but it wasn't so. Now, I want to say that if you get a chance to come to this race, you will not be disappointed. As loud and as chaotic as it is, it's a must. I'm standing out here near the fan zone and um, I have thoroughly enjoyed my four days here at the track. What have I seen? Well, I've seen quite a lot and I'm going to share some of that with you right now in no particular order. Let's talk a little bit about why I love this race. I love it for the passion. It's an old style track and outside of the track there's a whole lot of people that manage to find crazy vantage points to watch the race from. And walking on the other side of the fence from them you see their hands poking through the wire and it's a pretty good spot. This is down near turn one. And that's where I shot the start from. It's a beautiful view, lots of trees either side of the track and this marvellous tower in the background. Yes we had flares prior to the start of the race, thankfully it didn't ruin our photos. Let's go back to the grid now and I noticed Carlos Sainz having a chat with Helmut Marco on his way out to the grid for the national anthem. And I can tell you yesterday, Carlos Sainz Sr. had a meeting with Christian Horner in the Red Bull Energy Station. What's that about? Wouldn't you like to be a fly on the wall there? Celebrity-wise, uh, oh yes, Hugh Grant. I love Hugh, I love all of his, well, most of his movies anyway. He was on the grid today. Oh, and we had the Crown Prince of Bahrain there, not wearing his normal local attire, but in Western attire. Clearly enjoying himself too, with a nice Richard Mill watch on his wrist. Watch-wise, what was Hugh Grant wearing? I can tell you he had a Panerai. Oh, and have a look at this. This is a hand-drawn design by this fellow. I'm told that Ollie does a picture every race on the ground in front of the garage. And this one is a pat on the back to this man, Mark Thompson, one of the stalwarts in F1 photography. This was his 500th race. And he also brought his daughter, Beth, along with him for this race. Charles Leclerc arriving on Saturday morning was a nice shot and then I glimpsed to the left of my um, viewfinder in the, on the camera and I figured, oh, hello, his girlfriend's with him. That's a really good post. And then on closer inspection, I see the dog. This is Leo and it's been very popular on social media. Is it the first time we've had a dog in the paddock? No. Uh, Lewis Hamilton often brings his, well, I say often, a couple of times a year brings Roscoe to the track normally walks in with it and then um, houses it in the hospitality suite somewhere. And that's the same with um, Alexandra bringing in their puppy, which was a huge hit. Uh, she did take her for a couple of walks up and down the paddock, and indeed, it is a cute animal. And Nico Hulkenberg's wife, Egle, has brought their dog in on at least one occasion. Um, she had it in a handbag. Is it allowed? Well, yeah, obviously it's allowed because they've done it, but if you and I tried it, no, no dogs allowed at the track. But obviously these are the drivers, and no doubt those responsible say it's okay. Then I had a look at the comments on the social media post that I put up, and I couldn't get over the number of negative comments about Alexandra. She's not liked by a number of people, but then she's adored by more. And then you get this argument going on online between the people that don't like her and the ones that do like her, but I had to delete a couple of comments which were unsavory. But you're gonna get that on social media. But the pair were also, when I say the pair, I mean Charles and Alexandra were also accompanied by Charles' mother, Pascal. I haven't seen her at the track for quite some time. She was looking well and uh, still on the subject of Charles. These guys were big fans, as you can well see. Uh, originally, I just saw their hats and didn't realize they had this poster, but they were happy to unfurl it for me, and you're getting to see it now. I was waiting at the back of the garage for Lando Norris to uh, walk in. He didn't walk in, he ran in at speed, and there were three of us shooting there. All of us got him running in. And then we didn't turn around and shoot him as he went into the garage, and we should have, because he jumped up and gave that bar across the top, quite a slap, and he does that often at races heading into the garage. And it would have been a great photo, because his legs were off the ground, and he was jubilant and uh, joyful. And that's the sort of shots that you like on social media. Sebastian Vettel, after organising that Thursday night run, was in the paddock again yesterday, and so was his dad, Norbert. It's been a while since I've seen Norbert at the track, but he too was wearing one of those shirts for Senna. Carlos Sainz, uh, you might have seen this picture I put up of him the other day. Don Carlos, many of you said, with the slick back hair. I went back and had a look at my pictures from Thursday and Friday, and indeed, yes, he's had a healthy shave. But yesterday, being Saturday, his hair was back to normal. And why is that important? Well, it seems that that's the sort of stuff that you, 
the viewer like to hear about because you can see the racing stuff on television anytime so uh, I'm happy to bring you all the behind the scenes stuff that perhaps you may miss without looking at this channel. Things like oh, George Russell here fending off a fan who was a bit overzealous with his phone thrust into the face of the driver and this is something we see often uh, and the other thing I see often too is people put their hands around the driver as if they're having a hug and they're best mates and I've said this before um, a lot of them don't like it and certainly Lewis's bodyguards will slap your hand away which I'm behind 100% I just don't think it gives anyone the right to put their hands on someone else without asking Liam Lawson yes he was at the track today I caught him coming out of the Red Bull motorhome because Red Bull have this monstrous motorhome that uh, houses both the Red Bull drivers and the V-Carb drivers so uh, the V-Carb drivers have the longest walk from their hospitality suite to their garage but both of them have scooters so it's no real drama Yes, uh, Liam and Laurent Mekis smiling and uh, chatting as they made their way through the paddock yesterday, as was Franco Colapinto, very excited, young Argentinian driver. He won the F2 race, which had a ripper crash at the start. Um, and I caught him coming back, being interviewed by uh, whatever network was interviewing. And the funny thing was, I'm starting to take a few pictures, and I get on well with Franco, and he's very good for the camera, and he pokes his tongue at me while he's having a, an interview with the TV, but I didn't get that photo, so you just have to take my word for that. But I managed to get him after they finished, and he was bubbly. And on that post of mine, uh, well over 100 comments, so uh, thank you to those Argentinians that follow me, because uh, your comments were indeed numerous. Ex-Ferrari team principal Mattia Bonotto was with us, and it's sometimes funny when you see these guys who you normally only see in red clothing or blue clothing, whatever their team is, and you see them in casuals, it takes you a second to realise. But to, yeah, he was uh, holding court from the FIA um, motorhome and chatting to anyone and everyone. It should be said that uh, this track is visually pleasing to the eye. There's so much greenery around it, and photography-wise, yeah, plenty of sparking, which is great for photographs. And at the chicane... The cars get completely off the ground, yep, all four wheels often off the ground and not too high a speeds, but that is a great spot to photograph from, although it is bloody uncomfortable because those windows are at such a height that you can't sit and you can't stand, so it's like a, a three-quarter squat, so today my legs are absolutely killing me. Now this is a nice touch, all the drivers when they come in are asked to sign this poster. And this is one of the rare tracks where the drivers pretty much come in through the same entrance. Some tracks there are three entrances they can come in and it's very hard to catch all drivers coming through. But most of the photographers wait here and know that they can capture every driver that comes in. Although it's tricky for the drivers because they've got to find a spot to weave their way through that wall of photographers. The drive into this track on Thursday is maybe half an hour if you're staying. 25 kilometers away but today it is more like two hours and for one driver and I won't mention his name but uh, he decided he was not going to wait crazy lengths of time with traffic just stationary so he jumped into the other side of the road and headed up a number of kilometers when there was no traffic coming the other way but the police nabbed him pulled him over and threatened to take his license off him I'm not sure if a driver can drive on a track in F1 if they've had their license taken off and was suspended but uh, it didn't happen in the end and some smooth talking from that driver allowed him and his trainer to uh, continue on but he was given a severe reprimand. A couple of you have asked what the deal is with food when you're working at the track. As part of the media we get fed. Now some tracks pretty basic like Monaco where you get this but then we come to Imola where you get a full-on cooked meal for lunch and dinner and I can tell you it is typically Italian, it's beautiful food and the restaurant's located just outside the paddock. My favourite today was this pasta. Well, it's Saturday night and quali is done and I'm walking back into the centre of town. It is uh, once again pumping here with people enjoying themselves. That's a little ice cream shop there. And there's all these little bars over here which are actually on a roundabout. town square and it is absolutely thumping. Now be 100% certain this is a fantastic atmosphere down here. I think it's mainly locals. I haven't come across too many English speakers but 
and have come from near and far, I'd suggest, to soak up this atmosphere. And this is just Friday night. What's it going to be like tomorrow? And there are three separate sets of thumping dance music going on. One in the big square to my left, one behind me here, and one just around the corner here. Hello. Trust you've enjoyed this video, now I have to head off, but I invite you to like and subscribe and check out all this stuff for more content and merchandise. Thanks for watching. And stay passionate! Yay! It's the, it's the yellow one on the left of the two bowls of pasta.